first, I guess, straight out of the gate, we just need to say congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. congratulations are Thank in you. order. What an incredible performance. What a heartfelt performance. What a, I would imagine, even for the people, especially in the audience, transformative. You know how sometimes you have those experiences that are like, oh, you remember what it was like before the, a thing and then after a thing? I feel like your performances this year on, on AGT is going to be one of those moments. What did it feel like to see that golden buzzer uh, uh, confetti fly for you? <laughs> well, my life has uh, contained many aspects of it that have seemed impossible. Um, and especially in the last few years of my life, it's been impossibly catastrophic and tragic. And, you know, um, it's, it's felt like dreamlike in so many ways, but to see the golden buzzer confetti fall in slow motion after I performed, that was another moment that felt totally surreal mm -hmm. and impossible, but in the, on the complete opposite end of the spectrum. And, um, it just felt like such closure um, to, to, to bad times and bad years and hmm. uh, something I've believed in for a long time and being able to taste that in real life is indescribable. Yeah, that's a really interesting way to look at like the end of one part of the journey transitioning now into a whole new part of the journey because it certainly is what it feels like for, for yeah. us. Um, who, who are just now getting to know you, but you performed this song, this original song. And when I believe it was Howie was like, okay, so tell, tell us about the song. Uh, you said it's, it's, a, it's a song that kind of described the last year of my life. What, tell me about what's been happening. Tell me about what, what was going on that even sparked the need to write this song. Well, this was a song I wrote uh, for myself that I needed to hear. Um, and at the beginning of 2020, I was diagnosed with terminal cancer, given six months to live. Two weeks later, I um, went through divorce. My husband said he didn't want to do it anymore. And um, I moved to California to, to seek out, um, you know, some miracle treatment. And um, it, it, was a, it was amazing to, um, I mean, it was amazing that I found the healing that I found. But in the, in the midst of it, I had never felt so lost and disconnected and confused. And I was like a ghost on the earth. I just didn't understand what was happening to me. Um, so I wrote that song to say to myself, like, it's okay to be lost. Everybody, everybody's lost sometimes. Um, you're not alone. Maybe the one thing that, uh, that holds us all together truly is the fact that sometimes we all feel alone. Mm. Um, so I wrote that song for me. I just, it is a... Uh... You hear someone say, I wrote the song for me because it, it immediately makes you think or it makes you consider that they weren't hearing that anywhere else in their life, right? That you had to stand up for yourself. You had to speak into your own life. Mm -hmm. um, and to hear you talk about being given six months to live after a diagnosis of terminal cancer, um, a separation, divorce from a partner, uh, then the removal of yourself from likely most things you know in Ohio, right? Yeah. To a life in California. Why was singing the thing that you uh, came back to? Was that something that you had always been doing? Was it something that you had always pursued or thought you would? Yeah, yeah. The, I think the, the longest running dream for me has always been to write music and share it with people all over the world. But, um, I don't just write music for other people. I write it for myself, like I said. So I think making music is, um, and making art out of the bad things that have happened, it's the only way for me to make sense of it. Um, it's like I was handed something really awful and being able to turn it into music is a way for me to redeem it into something better than what I was handed, right? And to upgrade it into something better, um, even, you know, and I don't, I don't pretend to be like some kind of hero, um, like that I had the best attitude all the time, but um, making music and singing about something painful is a way to take something and turn it into something beautiful. So I, I don't know how to not write music about, about things that happen to me. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's um, a testament also to like your strength, right? To also then be able to 
or be willing to share that. One of the things I thought that was really beautiful is that as you said, it's important that everyone knows that I am much more than the bad things that have happened to me mm -hmm. right before you performed. Yeah. And so it, it makes me curious, like what, what are some of the things that you wished we were able to look past to see, like, right? Like what, what would be some of those other moments? What, maybe what are some of the other elements of your personality or on stage persona, you know, that you're going yeah. to use us to? What, what, might, what might else be there that you'd want people to know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, I think for, it's easy to, it's easy to put your identity into one thing. So it's easy yeah. to say like, oh, I'm a cancer survivor or I'm an artist. Or I'm a whatever, and um, I've been a wife, on this journey. A wife, a mother, a contestant. You know all of those things, uh -huh. right? Yeah, yeah. And um, I think for me, you know, I'm a daughter and a friend, and I, I'm a writer and a singer and a fighter. And um, really, I, the person that I want to be is somebody that can embrace every part of life as um, beautiful. So. So I do embrace all the cancer stuff and all of the hard stuff, but I also like really lean into joy. Like just because life is really hard and really painful doesn't mean that it's not also really beautiful. And doesn't mean that just because someone leaves you doesn't mean that love's not real. You know mm. what I'm so Ooh, come uh, on, that's a song. <laughs> nah, it can be. I'll write that down for you. Um, no, that's a that's a song. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just yeah. because they left don't mean love's not real. Shoot. Right. That's the truth. It's the truth. Yeah. So, so anyway, I don't know if I really answered your question with that, but. No, you did. You did. You did. I mean, it's, 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 it's about the, the good and the bad. Just mm -hmm. because the bad is um, significant doesn't mean it is any more significant than the good. That's right. right. Yeah. Um, it's about your focus and about your ability to accept all mm -hmm. of it. Right. Yep, absolutely. And so, so tell me this: when, because Simon did his Simon thing, where I bet, like, f first chorus, he was like, "Golden buzzer, she's my golden buzzer," but he milked that moment. Where did you have any idea? What did you when he said it's a when he said it's not going to be a yes for me? And Sophia looked at him like, "What? Did you know? Did you know it was going to be the golden buzzer?" Uh, I well, okay, so. When I got up and performed, I knew that I did a good job. Um, and I knew, I just knew that there was like no reason why I would get a no. Like, I'm very honest with myself, right? So if I had done, if I had done a crap job, I would have, I would have known that. And I'm a big enough person to be like, well, that was fun, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> right? Like, okay, well, we tried. <laughs> Well, I checked it off the list. I did it. I did it. I can't say I didn't do it. Right. Um, yeah. So, and I really thought that he was going to give me a no when he said that. He was like, you're a really good singer, but, and I was like, <laughs> like, cause I know I can sing, but I, my, my, my voice isn't going to like knock anybody on the ground or anything like that. So like, okay, well, wait, you, I, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a stop you right there because there was a moment when you were done singing that the audience, including the judges, didn't even know how to respond. It was like, <laughs> you stopped the song and everybody was like, oh, no, we getting up, we getting up, are we? You know what I mean? Like, you, you yeah. knock people back for, don't discredit that. Like, that, you could see in the audience, I don't know if you can see people from where mm -hmm. you were standing, but people literally were knocked back. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we felt, we all felt something. We had like a, we had like a spiritual moment together, like mm -hmm. in, in that room. And uh, so I felt it. And so I was very shocked when he said, you know, I can't, I can't give you a yes. I was like, why you gotta be like that? Like, <laughs> I, was like I know that was good. Like now you're just trying to make <laughs> up because I know, it. Like, I know that was good. <laughs> I was so, so I was real frustrated. I don't know if you could see it. I haven't seen it, but I don't know what my face was saying, but I was standing there like- You were like that, just like that, like, for real? Like, I I heard that, <laughs> that was good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and then I saw him reach and I knew what was gonna happen. And then clearly, if I felt like I blacked out, blacked out completely. I was yeah. all over the ground. I don't even know. I'll have to see what happened because I don't remember what happened. I was yeah. totally in dream dream world. 
it's it's an it's a pretty incredible experience and i love that they slow it down because mm -hmm. there is this kind of sensory overload as you're on the stage or in the audience when that happens it's kind of like all of it happens and it, it goes like that so when you watch it back i am i would be interested in even seeing your face as you watch back the episode oh, you know yeah. what i mean because it's yeah. it's next level it is next level tell me this when you when you did finally see and feel that spiritual experience um kind of culminate in this standing ovation everybody was on their feet what did that feel like for you well it felt like it felt like i wasn't the only one up there it felt like i was standing there i was standing there with hundreds of thousands of cancer survivors all over the world i was standing there with you know thousands of abuse survivors all over the world and i was standing there in place of people that did pass away from cancer and didn't have their chance and that's what was so spiritual about it um was because the moment is it's not just about me and a song although it was good it was about like the triumph of the human spirit you know um that's what it was all about and that's what we all stepped into um and i hope that I hope that whatever I represent, that the, the thing that people remember most is um, like what is possible. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, if you have the audacity to keep going when people tell you you should give up, um, it's these things are possible. So it yeah. felt like I was standing there with the rest of the world who wanted so badly to believe that miracles happen and dreams come true. That's that it was. I can't explain it. No, you I've, you've put it to, you've put it together beautifully, and there there are just a couple of things I want I want to get a little bit more clarification on. Um, one in particular, I know that when I would imagine, let me correct myself, I would imagine that when one is given the kind of diagnosis where it, it ends with X amount to live, whatever that is, if it's two weeks, two years, fifteen years, whatever that is it can make one feel like I'm being told to give up. Mm -hmm. I'm being told this is it. Mm -hmm. um, did it feel like that for you? Because I'm, I'm, I'm just curious, who would have ever told you or not encouraged you to fight, not encouraged you to go after your dream, whether it was writing music, singing songs, or fighting cancer? What was well, that perfect for you? I think there's a lot of there's a lot of people that um, want to hope for something in their own life and they're too afraid to. And so when they see somebody like me um, that says, you know, I'm going to live to be an old lady, I don't care. Mm -hmm. uh, um, those people can be like, it kind of like touches a nerve in them a little bit and makes them say like, no, 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 sorry, honey, but like you need to get on board with the truth because you're finna die. Um, yeah. But um, and and you know i i don't get offended by those people i've been through too much to be offendable by pretty much anything you know hmm. i just have like i can see the deeper issue but i was when i when i got that diagnosis from my doctor asked me if i wanted to she didn't ask me she told me that i needed to speak with a deaf counselor and prepare um which is nuts it's totally nuts and i don't think anyone has bad intentions when they do that everybody's doing the best they can um and and sometimes they think that you should just accept it and you know lay down and die in peace, but that's not the person that I am. Mm -hmm. Tell me, tell me why you've also decided decided. Tell me why you've also decided your performance is dedicated to people who have survived abuse. Why why is that something that you're like? This is a stake in the ground mm. for for us. Yeah. Well, I think. Um, this is like a, just a kind of just like another facet of my story, but I was in a bad relationship for a really long time and I was constantly confused and constantly um, just kind of like talked down to and looked down upon. And um, during the course of that relationship, I totally lost my voice. I lost my personality. I lost my sense of power. Felt like it felt like I was like, like my hands were cut off and I had no, no sense of self. And I lied to myself in that relationship for a long time because accepting the truth was going to be way, way too painful. And kind of when everything um, came to a head at the beginning of 2020, um, you know, I realized that like not only do I have a voice for like survivors of cancer and illness and chronic disease, but um, I've survived like like a manipulative and psychologically like 
abusive relationship. And if you would talk to me, if like you're talking to me now and I see, you know, you see the person that I am, if, if you were talking to me, you know, two years ago when I was in that relationship, I was, I was just like drained in the face and I, I wasn't writing music and I felt like I didn't know how to speak right. And I felt like I didn't have anything to say and I felt stupid. And um, mm. I hope that I can also be, you know, a beacon of hope and possibility for people that need to get out of those kinds of relationships. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, the, and I, 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 I didn't want to assume I didn't want to assume, but I thought it was, I thought it was worth coming back to because I feel like, you know, one, at our show, we have always called AGT, it's called America's Got Talent, but here we have also, we also recognize that it's America's Got Stories. And it's one of the things that I think yeah. unites the people who watch and rallies the people who support, right? Is that they see themselves in some sort of way in the performers that grace that stage. And I wanted to make sure that if, I would present at least the opportunity for you to share as much as you were comfortable sharing um, with, of your story with that audience, with our audience. Um, and also yeah. very specifically right now with me. Um, so I don't want you to feel like I'm like picking or like prodding or anything like that. And if it does feel that way, I would love to shift. Yeah. Um, and please let me know. Um, but yeah, like I just, I just thought it was a, it would be a moment that was worth mm -hmm. um, some exploration. Um, tell me this, I mean, when they showed your, when they, when they showed your initial package, you were like, okay, here we go. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just walk up on the stage. And Howie was like, who's here with you? You were like, I'm solo. Yeah. <laughs> Who did, did, you, did you call anyone after? Did, did any of your friends and family know that you were auditioning, that you would might grace the stage? Um, well, I kept, honestly, there were, my family didn't know. Nobody knew that I was there. What? Um, <laughs> yeah, I, okay, so I didn't want people to worry about it. I didn't want everybody to, like, get their hopes up. I didn't want anybody to, you know, and it felt like, it just felt a lot safer um, for me to, like, just do this alone. I told my little brother, who is an angel in my life, and he moved to California with me and, and was my mom and my husband and my best friend all at once for like an entire year. So he, he was the one person that in my family that knew about it. Um, but okay, everyone so else, when it, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Yeah, yeah, everybody else, I just told them after the fact and I was like, FYI, I'm gonna be on TV. <laughs> they were like, what? Right, not, not just am I going, not am I just going to be on TV, I'm going straight through the live rounds. Mm -hmm. I got the golden buzzer, Simon of all right. peoples, golden buzzer uh-huh yeah 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 they're freaking they're losing their mind because i think my family also has kind of thought that i was a little crazy um for continuing on to try to like write music um after all of this it's just like mm -hmm. haven't you been through enough like it's it's hard to pursue like a, a creative dream or a dream that's you know too big for you um and it's like you're signing on you're signing on to say like i'm wi i'm willing to risk the heartbreak that it takes to go there and mm -hmm. I don't think my family um, wanted to see me get my heart broken, which is probably another part of the reason why I didn't share it with them. But they're like over the moon. They're like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad she was right because we didn't know what we were gonna do. <laughs> 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 Woo! Like, oh, she's okay. All right, all right, she did it. We good. Wait, we good. When do we vote? When do we vote? <laughs> Who got your phone? You got your phone? Uh, it's awesome. How did you celebrate? Uh, well, we are celebrating, well, I mean, everybody's telling everybody and, t uh, w you know, we've celebrated at the house as a family, but we're going to have a big, huge party tonight with extended friends and family, and we're all jumping in the pool with our clothes on, and we're going to turn up, and it's going to be, it's going to be perfect. Yes, I love, I love. Okay, so then tell me, tell me what is next for you. You know, I, I, I am just so encouraged in this conversation, um, one, because regardless of what your, um, and I wanna say this respectfully, but regardless of what your body may be experiencing in connection to chronic illness, mm -hmm. your spirit seems to be, feels to be um, mm -hmm. fully intact and bright, mm -hmm. shining so bright. Uh, and so I'm just curious, what, what's next for you? Like, What is the next couple of weeks 
look like for uh, Nightbird? You know what I mean? You know what? I, I'm excited to meet all of the new friends and fans and family that I'm going to be able to connect with. I have all kinds of fun ideas. I just want to get to know people. And I have so much, I've got so much music and stories and blogs and things I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm, a, I'm so excited to um, just move forward with my life in that way and to start talking about, um, or maybe to continue cashing in all of this bad stuff that I'm handed. I am now have the opportunity to take it and cash that in for a better thing. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think that's what the rest of this summer is going to be. Ooh, that's a good way to look at it. That's a good way to look at it. And now I, I don't I don't want this to seem reductive. And I certainly don't want to make it seem like, oh, you gotta be this or you gotta be that, or it sounds like this or it sounds like that. But for about 2.2 seconds, there was like um this rasp uh uh halsey tone to your voice. I get that all the time, yeah. Do you have you are you a fan of her music? Do you are you connected with her in any sort of way? Do you follow no. her music? Uh, not any more than anyone else. I think her voice is amazing. Um, so, but and I've never tried to imitate her. Yeah. Uh, I've never, it's not, you know, sometimes you listen to a certain artist all the time and then you sound like them. So that's what right. I mm -hmm. uh, That's not my relationship to Halsey, but she really has an incredible voice. So it's a huge compliment when people say that. Yeah, I, that's that's exactly how I meant it. It's exact because there is a, because we're just meeting you. There also, there also seemed to be something very well altogether new something also like beautifully familiar in your tone. And I also, when you started singing, when you finished singing the song, I, and actually all through this interview, I have been hearing in the, in the back of my head, um, uh, feeling good, mm. right? The dum dum, dum dum, and yeah, I'm yeah. feeling good. I don't, I don't know why. I'm gonna find the background of one of my TikToks. That's perfect. See? meant to be. Boom, boom. 